Cooper, you still got the big load, I see, man. Damn. They ain't giving you any kind of break today, are they? Damn. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. It is Monday. This is the first game week. From here on out, it's real. From here on out, every Sunday, there is an NFL game except for the week before the Super Bowl. The marathon that is the NFL season is truly upon us. And I don't know if you guys are excited or not. I am ecstatic. I, I, oh, man. I am ecstatic. It is amazing that the offseason is finally over with. That is Monday, it's a holiday, and Thursday we got the opening game. Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday we'll be live streaming all of the games. Now, I've been working here at the Red Brick House because um, I will have some of the games I'll be here, some of the games I'll be at home, and so on. Um, so I want to make sure that we are ready to be able to live stream and get as much content out to you guys. So you're going to notice a few changes and things on some of the drops and stuff that we have in the set, and hopefully it doesn't crash on us or anything like that. And shout out to Ron Oliver with our new mix here. Our here we go mix, which is definitely kinder and gentler. Although maybe we want to pump it up a bit more to really go through and have a great time with this thing. So one of the things that's kind of cool, we started out with Cooper BB there, um, Cooper BB on our um, intro here, and Cooper BB is getting a whole bunch of love. Bucky Brooks. Bucky Brooks, you know, one of the NFL experts out there, not one of the ones that are constantly in there just trashing the Cowboys on ESPN and stuff. But at NFL.com, a couple of days ago, he put out an article, the 10 overlooked NFL rookies who showed serious flashes in, in preseason. And, of course, one of them is Cooper Beebe. And so, exactly, this is exactly what, what he had to say. Uh, we can go through the list of people that he had. He had Spencer, Spencer Radler. Carson Steele, running back. Uh, Jalen Wright, Miami Dolphins, running back. Um, Jermaine Burton, um, wide receiver. Kingsley Samoda, um, Kansas City offensive tackle. And then Cooper Beebe, center. The Cowboys' playoff chances hinge on performances of an offensive line that is expected to include two rookie starters, with Beebe at center and first-round pick Tyler Guyton at left tackle. BB is a big part of the team's plans to play bully ball on the ground while providing fortress like protection around Dak Prescott. The rookie has shown impressive skills controlling the point of attack from the pivot, and with a pair of Pro Bowl caliber guards, um, Tyler Smith and Zach Martin, around him, BB will play like an all star in year one. That's high praise. That's really high praise for Cooper BB. Now, the thing that's interesting here is the Cowboys. They're always mad scientists. You know, you always hear, you know, Stephen Jones talking about position flex. You know, we like guys that can play multiple positions and things. And when you take Cooper Beebe um, from his whole career, he's played right tackle, left tackle. He's played guards. He only played a couple of games at center. And so for the Cowboys immediately to say, we're going to draft you, but we want you to be a center was – taking a big risk because not everybody can snap the ball. It's, it's not an easy thing to be, you know, a football length away from a guy across from you, have the football and have to snap shotgun snaps. Um, he worked, of course, with his mom even. He was snapping the football to everybody to get as much work as possible in. But the thing we've already seen in training camp with him is the strength that he has, that this guy – is an absolute beast at the point of attack. We've seen him, of course, doing the combo block um, where he's literally thrown the uh, nose tackle down and ends up picking up the blitzer. Um, I can show you that one again because it's, let's see. Let's see if I got the right screen. Boom. When you see a guy 
who's strong enough to throw that guy down and has enough awareness to go ahead and find the next guy, um, that is huge. And it may be beneficial because here's the thing. You have to understand a couple things. On the offensive line, okay? Offensive line, typically your guards are guys that do a lot more moving around. Okay, you do a lot more pulling. You're going to go ahead like on, on, on the sweeps and everything else. You're going to be the guy that's pulling around trying to be a lead blocker. And usually you have guys that are a little bit better on their feet quicker and things because they're also trying to get to the second level and chase down linebackers, guys that are usually faster than they are. And so you're a little bit more athletic-wise as a guard. As a tackle, typically you're more of a bigger guy that is more stationary, okay? And and you not that's not to say that you don't have to have quick feet and good hands because you are taking care of that guy that's usually that edge rusher that's really, really quick. And so it's a different technique. As a center, you're usually protected by both guys. So when you start thinking about Cooper Beebe, who was used to pulling and things like that, as a guard, it may translate to him being an even better center. He's got the strength. He's got the muscle. And he's got longer arms than typically you have for a center. But you can see the strength that he has in there. Now, I did say, I was doing a video, shout out to my buddy Greg, because I was saying, in, in reality, we need everybody to step up for the season to be a success. I was saying that the free agents that we ended up getting on our defense, I was comparing them to the ones we got in 2020, which was an utter disaster. We got nothing from Clinton HaHa Dix and um, Don Terry Poe and Gerald McCoy and Emerson Griffin. You know, we were excited about those guys because those were guys that have done things in the past. But in reality was, you know, Clinton HaHa Dix was cut before training camp. Gerald McCoy was hurt in training camp. And Don Terry Poe was too fat to do anything. And so I was saying for our team to do well, we really need to get the Carl Lawson's in the rotation, much like, you know, we ended up getting Dante Fowler. We need to get um, Lavelle Joseph in playing better than, say, Hankins and so on. Um, but Greg kind of brought me back down to earth that if this team really is going to succeed, it's going to be these rookie offensive linemen. And the thing is, is it's one of those things. You can have a great back like a Barry Sanders and a bad offensive line. Ultimately, you're better off with an offensive line and an average running back. Because here's the difference. You know, you can look at it and say, well, you got to go ahead and draft that running back in the first round. Yeah, but that running back's only going to touch the ball about 25 times if he is the bellwether back. That offensive lineman, every single play, you need him. He's going to help your running game. He's going to help your quarterback by keeping him upright. And if Cooper BB can keep from getting lifted up and dropped in Dak Prescott's lap like Biotis did, we got gold. And the fact that the Dallas Cowboys, and, and I'll say this might be the most overlooked play or draft pick because it was an extra pick for trading back to get Tyler Guyton. If those two guys end up being really good starters – a.k.a. Pro Bowlers, it's a miracle that you got them, in essence, with one pick. So, yes, I'm looking forward to this game. Um, the Cowboys are two-and-a-half-point underdogs. Of course, the um, road team always gets three points, okay, because they're on the road. So, basically, they're saying on a neutral field that the Cowboys might be slightly better. Now, here we've got Deshaun Watson who has a lot to prove. We talk about Dak Prescott has a lot to prove. You got $230 million fully guaranteed that went to Deshaun Watson, and thus far he's got 12 TDs and nine interceptions, or is it 14 TDs? 14 TDs and nine interceptions in two seasons. They have an incredible defense. They usually have a really good running game. But Nick Chubb is going to be starting out the season on the uh, injured list, injured uh, reserve. And we'll see what we're going to see. This would be a game that would be great for the Cowboys to get on the road, to get you know a little cushion because the first half of the schedule at the moment looks really, really tough. 
and you want to go ahead and make some hay right now if you can. Get on the board. Get that first win. Although, the funny thing about the Jason Garrett era was every time we won the first game of the season, we never made the playoffs. It's kind of crazy. Kind of cra- I, I, I don't understand it, but still. But be that as it may, it is what it is. Now, of course, let's go to the usual talking points. And that is one Rain Dakota Prescott. <sighs> Boy. Talking to Game Time Brian this morning, it is crazy how the conversation about Dak Prescott. It it's, it's brings out a lot of passion when you start talking about Dak Prescott. That... Um, Haters just come out of the woodwork. And like Brian was like, he's like, I just wish they would just get this deal done and signed so we could just move on. Because it's just talked about in nauseam. <sighs> Listen to this one. This is like some of the stuff you get. This is pretty amazing. When he gets 30 plus rush attempts behind him, he's virtually impossible to beat. 53 and 7. Less than 30 rush attempts. He's not a very good quarterback, 20 and 34. But this is more sobering. If if Dak just gets 100 yards rushing, again, he's Mahomes. He's 64 and 17. If he gets less than 100 yards, Dak Prescott has nine career wins. This is pretty now, amazing. That was posted by my man Law Nation. He refound re- it. But that was a few years ago um, because we're not getting a lot of 100 yard gains like we used to but the reality is is you can say that about pretty much any quarterback see this is how they cherry pick things and say oh well typically if your running game's not working and you become one dimensional most teams don't win you could say Troy Aikman didn't win there was a thing with Emmett Smith when Emmett Smith ran you know 100 yards the Cowboys were like butter when they didn't They were losing games. So we can't take things like this, and we think that all quarterbacks end up winning even though the running game doesn't work. And this is where it gets to be crazy. But, you know, it's just the – they know which side of the bread is buttered on, and that's talking Cowboys. Fly or fall after last season's collapse. By the way, you and Tannenbaum are both nuts on that one. But let's talk about the Eagles because I think they're like one of those really big birds that has trouble getting off the ground but eventually flaps their wings hard enough and just above the tree line. They will fly. <laughs> they will fly. They will perform the miracle of flight. They will just do so in a manner that makes us still wonder, are they last year's team at the end of the season or are they that one that made it to the Super Bowl? They got to get their confidence. They got to get their chemistry. They got to find a way to fly a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. We'll start to find out. That's a a really fascinating Friday night uh, week one opener, Green Bay and Philadelphia. All right, Swagoo, let's talk about your Cowboys. We had all this drama, the offseason, Dak, all the rest of that. We are moving on from that today. We are officially turning the corner to the season on this program. Will all these things, so here's the question, will all of this derail their season? They got a season to play here before anything gets worked out with their quarterback or anybody else. Will all the nonsense that has swirled around them, will it derail their season? I thought they were moving on. No, it won't derail their season because we determine great seasons by going to the playoffs and possibly winning a championship. They're not going to do that anyway. Uh, Make the playoffs, they should. Gee, remember you used that term scorched earth with Aaron Rodgers a few years ago? I Mm -hmm. think that'll be Dak Prescott. I think Mm -hmm. Dak Prescott will play pissed off great football this year. Uh, The weapons we talked about, C.D. Lamb is back in the fold. Uh, Obviously, it ain't the best offensive skill position group in the NFL, but he does have a receiver and a tight end and Jake Ferguson, who I think is going to be really good. The backfield of Dalvin Cook and obviously Ezekiel Elliott, hopefully they can do that by committee. But this is about Dak Prescott individually. Last year, I said Dak Prescott is going to have to play at a certain level for Dallas to be a good team and have a chance to go win a championship. He actually played at an MVP level last year Mm. during the regular season. To me, Dak has, he's had a kid. He's unfiltered. 
He's not worried about what's mm -hmm. being said. He's tired of hearing certain things that are being said mm -hmm. by ownership and people around the organization. I mm -hmm. think that goes play as free as he possibly can this year, and he has a really good season, and then he walks the dog and goes somewhere else and gets $60 Ooh. million. Dollars. Well, we'll see. I mean, you just mentioned the, that, that running back the may be the best in the entire NFL. If this was 2019, I mean, they're running back. <laughs> they got jokes. I mean, what, what are we doing here, people? <laughs> Jeff, you, you have throughout this summer expressed more confidence in the Cowboys season than most people. You like them more than most people that I've talked to have. They never I do. Them. I mean, I think part of it, too, is that we've talked all offseason about the drama of potentially not having Dak and CD and Micah Parsons. Well, guess what? All three are going to be there week one. Mm -hmm. So to me, this is I, I understand there are differences from last year. I get all that. But I just remember a team midway through the season. And I know, again, I have to put out a caveat here. Midway through the season doesn't win you Super Bowls. But they were playing at such a high level on offense. They did fail in the postseason. Nothing really matters until we get to the postseason. But I still think that this team is very, very capable of winning the division, of getting into the dance, and then exercising the demons. There's a lot of meat there. I just there think that this is a, lot still of meat a very good team. They're a two and a half point underdog Sunday at Cleveland. What do you think? They're going to win the game. I agree with Swag Goo. For all the angst of the Dak Prescott situation, he's going to play great. He has no, 60 million reasons why. And by the way, Deshaun Watson's played in 12 games as a Cleveland Brown in two years. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, I mean, the, the Browns have a lot more offensive questions, but they had arguably the best defense in the entire NFL last year. That is one of several fascinating opening games. We'll get back to the Friday night one. Five NFL season. Okay. Kind of interesting that Mike Tenenbaum, who says Sadur Sanders will be the quarterback of the Cowboys, also says that um, Jerry should lock Dak Prescott and Todd France into a room and hammer out a deal, that they literally are all over the fence here. So it'll be interesting to see that we actually have a game to talk about and, you know, injury reports, and stat lines, and everything else because the first week is here. It is already the 2nd of September. All right, good people, as always, I appreciate you guys. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Definitely helps the algorithm out here as we get ready to rock and roll. It is going to be one busy, busy week. And um, we'll finish it out with my buddy, Philly 500. I want to apologize for not being able to stream earlier today. I, I had a bunch of stuff come up. Cock work, cock work, cock work, cock work. The Eagles are trying to... Uh, did I just say what I think? <laughs> uh, did...